What's going on everybody and welcome back to the Brooks and Gerald YouTube channel. In this episode we are going to do a little bit of work to the vise that um, if y'all remember uh, one of the first few videos I posted after my return video we actually rebuilt um, a little vise here. It's a little three and a half inch vise. If y'all guys haven't seen that video I'd recommend going ahead and checking it out. But um, if y'all don't remember um, I mentioned in that video that I needed to make an auto uh, pull back for the uh, movable jaw on this vise because the original one unfortunately broke off So um, in this video we're going to do just that so we're going to um, take the vise apart again and we're going to make a uh, Another uh, we're going to put another washer on there So that way we will have something to um, pull the jaw back and I'll show you what I mean um, And I'm just going to go ahead and take the uh, little pull screw out here the little uh, screw the thread Alright, so as y'all can see here on this, um, on this, uh, screw for the vise, this is the vise right here, if y'all haven't seen it. Um, so, with this part right here, we actually need to do some work to it. And, and um, as I mentioned before, we need to make another little, uh, washer to put on here. So, as y'all can see, there's that little groove right there. That's where the original one was. So, what I'm gonna do is basically take a, um, ordinary washer and, uh, cut it in half. And, um, after I cut it in half, I'm gonna, um... Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out this groove right here. As you can see, there's some um, stuff in the groove from the previous adhesive that I used. Um, but this time, we're actually going to be doing uh, using JB Weld um, to fasten this whole thing together. Number one, because JB Weld is an excellent adhesive to use for this sort of thing. And also, um, it provides a very good uh, holding point for the washer that we're going to use to make this pullback. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to put this in the vise and I'm going to... Um, Start using the Dremel 8100 here. I have to replace the uh, the cutting disc on it first, though. Um, but after that, we'll start working away at this, and we're going to cut another groove in there um, to allow for that half of a washer uh, to be uh, JB welded in there. So uh, without further ado, let's get on into the project. All right, y'all. So now we got the uh, cutting disc replaced on the Dremel, as you can see. And uh, so now what we're going to do, and... Um, what, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, start cutting out this groove. And as you can see, the groove does have a little bit of a... I'd say I think this is a little bit of adhesive in it. Um, the adhesive that I used previously, um, I used some Loctite super glue to hold that in, which was really not a very good idea because, as you can see, uh, it broke off um, in, the, in the groove, as you can see. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Dremel 8100 with its cutting disc, as you can see. We're going to use that. And we're going to uh, clean out this groove. And when we clean out this groove, we'll uh, go get a washer and uh, chop it in half with the Dremel 8100. And um, then I'll be able to use some JB Weld to secure that in place. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to get my safety glasses on. And we're going to uh, start uh, chewing away at this groove until we get it hollow enough. And I'm also we might have to widen it a little bit as well. So if we have to do that, we'll do that as well. But um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get the Dremel and... Uh, Start chomping away at this. Now, as y'all can see, we're getting the adhesive out, and I'm just going to continue doing that all the way around it. And as I mentioned before, we might have to widen this groove as well. So I'm just going to I'm just going to uh, continue doing that and remove all the adhesive out of this so we can uh add on a new washer. So uh let's get to it. All right, y'all, so as y'all can see, we uh pretty much got the um got the groove pretty much clean as you can see. Pretty much all the way around we have it clean now. So um now all we have to do is I uh, go get a washer and um find out if we have to widen this or not and if we do, I will use the uh grinding disc to be to just to go in there and widen it in certain places if I have to and um keep in mind I do want to mention something about when you're using these uh Dremel Lady 100s I would fully recommend wearing some uh safety glasses these are the kind of safety glasses I use and uh I, the only reason I wear something like this is so they'll fit over my glasses and um as you can see that they're, they're pretty big but really they're ideal for me being that I wear glasses so anytime you're using a Dremel or a grinder or whatever, I'd fully recommend wearing these at all times. So uh, that's just a little um, 
health and safety advisory for all y'all out there um, who are actually beginners to this hobby. So uh, now we're going to go find us a washer and see uh, see about if we need to modify this groove anymore. Alright y'all, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, use the uh, Dremel Lady 100 to uh, just cut this washer in half. And um, after that we'll uh, start looking at the uh, groove again. So now we're going to um, go ahead and use the uh, 8100 to chop this washer in half. Alright y'all, so as y'all can see, we now have the washer cut in half, and we have the uh, piece that we're going to use. So um, now what we need to do is we need to widen this groove, so that way we can just put that right in there. Now keep in mind, when you put this in here, you don't want it to be a tight fit, because you need enough room for the epoxy, which is W Weld, to be able to get real deep in that groove, and um, make sure it's a fully penetrated uh, joint with the JB Weld. So the next thing we've got to do... As uh, you can see, there's, there's a little bit of a gap right there. So now all I need to do is just uh, widen and deepen this groove a little more. And um, after that, we should be pretty much good to uh, JB weld the piece right in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and get to that, and we'll keep on trying until we get a good fit. Alright, y'all. So now, um, after uh, a little bit of gentle uh, widening of the groove and modifying, now the washer, as you can see, is a perfect fit. And as you can see, there is no groove whatsoever in the uh, bottom part of the washer right there, as you can see. So now the thing that we need to do is uh, basically just epoxy the, two, epoxy the two parts together. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some JB Weld, um, which is basically just steel reinforced epoxy, um, to fasten these two pieces together. And um, one good tip is whenever you're JB Welding or using epoxy in general to put two parts together, I'd fully recommend... Key in the parts first, or key in the parts first, so that way um, the uh, JB Weld has something to bite into. Same thing for painting. I'd recommend sanding and making sure the surface is clean, so that way the paint or epoxy has something to bite onto. And um, as you can see, I've been grinding away at that surface, so it's got plenty of scratches in it. And um, I've also got a key uh, for the JB Weld, and also I sanded the inside of the washer with a little drum sander and the Dremel 8100. So now both surfaces are basically keyed and ready to go together. Now we just have to use the JB Weld um, to put in the groove and put on the um, inside part of the washer. And uh, let it cure for 24 hours and then she'll be good to go. Alright y'all, so now i got the uh, JB Weld epoxy mixed up. And uh, for those of y'all wondering what JB Weld is, this right here is what JB Weld is. I'm going to show y'all. This right here is basically is just a steel reinforced epoxy, and uh, it's it's best known as the best epoxy I've ever used. Um, and as you can see, it comes in a two-pack formula, and I forget which part, but one of these is uh, steel reinforced, like it has steel uh, bits in it. So uh, this is actually known as a steel reinforced epoxy, so it makes it a whole lot stronger. And um, as you can see, um, I now got it mixed up on the board, so now I'm just gonna um, basically take the washer. Let me get off the bench. There we go. And I'm going to apply some to that little sump right there. And um, then I'm also apply some to the groove. As you can see, I went ahead and put the uh, movable jaw on it. Um, just so, you know, it can actually move the jaw instead of be behind it. Which um, would have to happen if I wanted to put the jaw on. So I'm going to also put some JB Weld in that groove just a little bit. As well as in the little sump. As you can see, that's in the cut in half washer. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to video this bit, sadly, just because I don't have a cameraman at the moment. And, um, plus I don't have a uh, tripod for this smartphone. So, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and I'll show you all the results, and we'll come back in 24 hours. And, uh, we'll see how good it's cured. We'll see if it's cured all the way. Alright, y'all, so now we got the, uh, JB Weld on the washer and on the groove. And, uh, we have the washer installed with the JB Weld on it. And uh, so now all we have to do is just wait 24 hours for this to cure. And uh, in 24 hours we'll come back and uh, we'll reassemble the vise and we'll test it. Um, we'll just make sure that uh, the washer will pull the draw back without breaking. Um, which, I do have a, um, which I do have a pretty good amount of confidence in the epoxy that I'm using. 
Um, again, it is JB Weld that I'm using, uh, steel reinforced epoxy, and I, I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of, uh, trust and belief in this product. And, um, I do believe that this JB Weld will have enough strength to, uh, lock that washer down good and tight so it'll be able to pull that jaw back. So, um, we'll come back in, uh, 24 hours and we'll check it, um, just to see, um, how strong the joint is. And, um, also at the same time, we'll, uh, probably try to use the vice for just a little hold something and I'll feature that in the next uh, video as well so um now we're just gonna wait for 24 hours and I'll come back in 24 hours and see how this uh, jaw is cured all right guys so uh, now 24 hours later we came back and checked the vice it's been it's actually been a couple of days since I uh, put the JB world on there just because I got in late last night so I'm um, it's actually been sitting for probably I'd say close to 72 hours now about two or three days so um but as you can see here the washer is firmly stuck to the uh to the threaded shaft here and um now we got something which will pull this vice jaw back so that way um we don't have to pull it back by hand anymore so uh without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and uh reassemble the vice the other parts over here and um again if you haven't seen the uh previous uh series i did about rebuilding this vice i'd recommend going and check that out so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this vise. Alright y'all, so now all I got to do is pretty much just assemble it. So I put a little guide in first, the guide goes in the bottom, and then you put it up a little further and you can start uh, just engaging the threads. You can see here if I can engage the other day. Just ease it off the bench a little bit so it'll be easier to reel in. Get it easier to thread in. There's some corn beetles in this shop just digging out the top of the beans. It's making a whole mess in here. But um, as y'all can see now, we pretty much got the uh, vise pretty much complete now. Um, again, as I mentioned in the series, we did have to make that part, which is now in there. So the function of that part is basically to pull the vise jaw back by itself. So watch. As you can see, when I ease it off the bench a little bit, it automatically pulls the vice jaw out with it. Whereas used to, we'd have to pull it out by hand. So now we don't have to do that because there's a washer there to pull it back. So, um, well, y'all, that's pretty much about it on uh, this little short uh, video about how to uh, fix this vice up. So now the vice is pretty much complete. We can put it into service. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to put it right there where this uh, toolbox is. I'm probably just going to put it right there. Um, just as a uh, b another bench vise for this bench. As we already have a bigger vise for this bench, I can put that vise right here, and I'm um, have another vise at hand in case I ever need it. So um, that's pretty much it for this uh, little vise right here. Now all we have to do is just mount it, and uh, that's just as simple as uh, drilling a hole in that plywood and then using a bolt through that hole right there to bolt it in place. So uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed this uh, little vice little vice repair. Uh, I mentioned it in the series that we had to do it, so I figured I'd go ahead and do it. So uh, y'all be sure to stay safe out there, and I hope y'all enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next upload. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps a lot.